Hello and welcome to episode 5 of our Frozen Mod to Grombar campaign. In the last episode, we moved to the south here. We took out some uh, provinces from the nation of Bone Carver, fully annexed them, and uh, took what is rightfully ours. Now, I was informed in the comments that uh, eventually everything that's in the Eskin region, we can make into a march, I think, once we form Grombar. So uh, we might have wasted a little bit of admin points here, but like it's not the end of the world. And uh, I can just exploit development there as well right before that happens, and then we'll we'll get a little bit of money. Now, speaking of money, I have been sitting on way, way too much of it. And as we can see, we have some very, very good uh, buildings that we could be building. I want to make sure that I am building up in here. That is a center of trade. These are also center of trades, but do they already have marketplaces? They do. Awesome. Uh, we have 46% control of our current node and only 1% here in the uh, Serpent's Head, but that's okay. Uh, we did go to war with Bjarnrick in the last one as well. We took a couple of the provinces, specifically the islands, that way we control them. But I wanted to save up admin points, that way we can get to admin tech 7 as quick as possible, because then we will be able to form Grombar, which will definitely, definitely happen in today's episode. Now, our super fast uh, expansion, I think, is over. Yes, we no longer get plus 100 uh, global settlers per year. We are now down to simply plus 70, which, you know, it's not terrible, but it's also not great. <laughs> so after one of these colonies finishes, I'm probably going to drop expansion ideas and then we'll we'll go into something that I actually want to fill out. Uh, it all kind of depends on what our new ideas for ground bar will be. Now we have some rebels that want to uh, get a little feisty here and they will get feisty indeed. So we will wait for them to fire. I mean, we still have some decent money here, but uh, these buildings are not as valuable as the stuff we could just build up, but uh, on the provinces that are already in the middle of construction. So we will wait on that. Uh, religious action can be selected. Okay, we have 200 points. Let's, uh, I want to check what gathering an army does. Grather gate, great host, time to go to war. We'll do that right before we go to war. But right now, let's look for an omen. Omen of calamity. Ooh. Okay, this one minus 10. Yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna spend the points. That's unfortunate, but uh, that is what happens when you roll a random die. Sometimes things end up being bad. Uh, oh wait, no, 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 we gotta, we gotta put down these Urbix and Rebels first, then we can drill. Then we'll be all good to do that. We do have too many diplomatic relations. That's okay, that should be fixed relatively soon, I hope. And let's bring our galleys back home. Rivsby has embraced Renaissance. Have we embraced the Renaissance? I think we have. Pretty sure we have. Uh, yes. We have, in fact, done that. There was some other thing I wanted to do, but now I don't remember. Hmm. All right, let's abandon the colonizing ideas, and we are going to go into... It looks like we have mostly... Uh, mill tech that's very far ahead. So I think we're gonna open up with a mill idea group Probably go I mean, I love offensive is the thing we don't have a treasury like an income for quantity yet So either quality or offensive I mean quality is good You know what? I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna see what ground bars ideas are and then we will go from there That way we can synergize with what we have. I think that's probably the smarter thing to do I neglect you and get some trade power. That's all fine. You guys can come on home. Uh, roaming band of half orcs settle. Sure. Can we get that random development? Ah, nope. That's okay. We are definitely cool with half orcs because, you know, that's what we are. <laughs> we are a half orc. All right. That's not going to be all that valuable. That is worth it. Trade. Nope. That's being built up right now. What about manpower? Yeah, we can get some manpower going. As for crown land, we can go ahead and revoke and sell titles. Give us another couple hundred ducats that we can throw into some buildings. Uh, though I'm not sure which ones we actually want to go for. More manpower, honestly, is not a terrible idea at this point. Uh, Orzarm Chandash, ruler is challenged. Ozarm Chandash, a duel for honor in Orkish, is an ancient and respected Orkish tradition. It is the duel between a clan chief and a member of his clan who considers himself more fit to rule the clan. 
in Orcus society, where strength is the key to your social status, duels are not rare. Orcs fight over food, water, property, and even partners. Of course, the right to rule the clan can also be contested in such a fashion. That is why the stability of each orc clan relies on the martial abilities of their leader. If he proves himself as one of the best warriors in the clan, his rule is relatively peaceful. The tribe may even accept their child as its successor, but only as long as they consider them worthy of their parent's name. However, when a chief shows signs of weakness, mighty and ambitious orcs of the clan will immediately begin to estimate their chances against the current ruler. If they believe their chances are high enough, they will gather the whole tribe and challenge the chief for a duel. When that happens, the chief can either give up the throne, be humiliated, and banish from the tribe, or they can accept the fight and try to protect their rule. As orcs see it, both outcomes are good for the tribe. If the chief loses, that means that he is a weakling, unfit to rule their clan. And if the chief wins, he proves that he was underestimated and earns the respect of the trust of his tribe. Our war chief received an insult with invitations for such a duel. What will he do? If I can step down, a 555 takes over. We lose one stability and 25 prestige. Or we fight. 553. You know what? We go for it. We will defend our honor and title. And we have one. I don't know if it's because we had a higher mill skill or what, but we won. Uh, Mog the first came out of the fight as the victor. Now the pretender has to leave Frozen Maw forever or accept death by the hands of his victor. From our perspectives, his fate no longer matters as Orcish history. It has no interest in losers. We gain one stability, 15 religious power. Our ruler gains one mil monarch point. That's amazing. Five prestige, 20 military power. And until the death of him, plus five morale of armies and minus 1% year. The army tradition and the monstrous tribes gain 20 loyalty. And with that, we can take technology level 7 for admin, which means we can go ahead and form the nation of Grombar. Now, we get Legacy of the Green Tide until 1529, which gives stability cost plus 15%, plus 1 colonist, plus 10% settler chance, plus 5% morale of armies, plus 25% national manpower modifier, plus 10% land force limit, minus 15% land maintenance, Plus 20, or plus 20 global settler increase, minus 1 diplo relations, minus 25 institution spread, minus 25% reinforced cost, minus 20 admin efficiency, that's rough, and minus 25 reform progress growth. Let's go ahead and click the button. Our color changes and our name is now Grombar and we have new missions. Oh yeah, and we have a lot of them completed. So there's going to be a, a lot of talking here at the uh, very, very beginning. Uh, and our ideas don't change. Okay, good to know. Good to know. That means I can choose my idea groups uh, a little bit more intelligently. Alright, which ones do we have? We have found Kara Tarug. We need to have 200 uh, crowns, 50 military power, and I need to own some provinces. Alt Lake Grass. I don't know which one that is, but it's somewhere. Uh, at the center of the Northern Pass lies the Great Salt Lake, one of the few places in the Northern Pass not completely covered in forests. Thus, due to both its strategic location and an easy land to develop, we shall build a new fortified city, Kara Tarug, to serve as a capital in the east. Further and further, the domain of the Grey Kings shall spread. We gain a castle here as well. Now where is, uh, what they call it, the Salt Marsh? Salt Grass Lake. Salt Grass Lake. Literally right in front of me. Ah, okay. So this is going to get a, uh, yeah, this will be a pretty good province to develop as well. Click the button. And that also starts uh, Fort being built. Now I need to own 20 owned provinces in the Northern Pass. That's fine. We can do that. Uh, brand new kingdom. All we have to do is be Grombar, which we are. So no longer a scattering of tribes sitting as conquerors over the kingdoms of old, we have truly turned our realm into a kingdom in its own right. We are surely not Balvoran, but so too are we no longer the realm of Frozen Ma. We have become something greater, something more. A kingdom where orc and human alike are able to live together in peace, not just surviving, but thriving. Grombar. We will demand annexation of all your vassals. If their opinion of you is positive, they will likely accept. Let's just double check that real quick. Yeah. They do all like me. So they will get that one day. Let's unpause for a day. You son of a gun. Wait. No, okay, that was a different one. I think that's a different vassal that I popped out. That's why. Throne Inheritance. Yeah, we inherited Esald, Sedevic, and uh, Rivesby. I'm pretty sure this was one that I released personally, so we'll have to annex in the old-fashioned way. Now, direction of our new country. 
Our newly founded country of Grombar requires guidance. We must reform our clan society into more organized government form if we are to be taken seriously in the political arena. The question is, what model should we seek to strive for? We can become a monarchy, a republic, or a theocracy. I did not know that we got this decision. Okay. So this gives... That actually gives you the army tradition. That's interesting. I think I'm going to go monarchy, though. Mog the first will unite as a king of our new nation. I like Mog. He's good. The heir is good, so I'm not worried about bad monarch point generation for a while. Uh, let's do it. We are the kingdom of Grombar. And I have government reform progress now. Oh, it oh it automatically switched us over to uh, reform. We're no longer tribal. We are. Weird. I'm going to assume we have to uh, make our way through that. Uh, we look here, rebuild something. We need more money. Move capital to Garak. Oh, we're moving our capital. Okay, interesting. For 100 points, that's that's not too bad. Uh, Grombari melting pot, so we just need Diplo power 100. Though the though for years humans and orcs have been at odds, here in Grombar, our two peoples have come together in one great nation. In the streets of our cities, one can see trade, friendship, and even love blossoming between human and orc. No human or orc is slave to another, and all work together in order to achieve a brighter future. Very large tolerance increase of humans, half orcs, and orcs. And until the end of the game, minus 25% culture conversion cost. Huh. Interesting. So, 60 provinces need to be half-orc. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So, it, it, you're literally supposed to culture convert here. Though I suppose this level of culture conversion is not uh, as bad as other ones. Oh my god, we have to get rid of so many troops. Wowzers. Okay. We lost a lot of land force limit. That's fine. Uh, economic development. We needed to have at least 300 dev, which we do. Uh, no longer is Grombar a land bereft of cities and settlements. Now we have established ourselves as a true economic center in the north, with Grombari markets attracting traders from Esken, the Hellenic Reach, Lesinor, Anbanar, and even Bolwar. However, this prosperity is not guaranteed, and we must work hard to ensure that our economic prosperity continues well into the future. We gain three development in Balvorin, and it gets growing city for 25 years. I don't think I'm going to click this yet. I think this is just locked to our capital, and once we move our capital, I think it would be better to uh, to get free development in our new capital instead of this one, because I, I don't want to develop this anymore. Alright, uh, obviously we want more manpower. I don't know what else we'd ever choose. I think that was the only mission that we have now completed, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, national decisions. We can start demonstration. Do we have a mission to demonstrize? Also, they want us to colonize. I'm not going to lie. Might skip it. <laughs> I don't know how much I want to colonize in Dallaire, but... Oh, we have to. Dang, okay. Okay, then we will colonize. Uh, I, I think we just have to uh, reform the hard way. Oh, man. Hope you're all ready for uh, some stability losses here as we demonsterize. It's going to suck if I don't actually have to do this, but I already clicked the button. It's over. We're doing it. All right. Uh, things to delete. All of these troops. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's completed. These are not. We'll move you in. How far over force limit are we? We're 10 over. We, we cannot afford that. Just plain and simple. We can't afford that. Uh, let's take the cavalry. We'll delete them. They are the most expensive. Infantry are going to be our thing, it seems. So let's not play away from our strengths. What are we at now? Oh, still need quite a bit. Quite a bit. If you think I'm actually doing the math to count, you're crazy. I'm just, like, clicking buttons here. All right, that puts us back to force limit. We're making a lot of money now. Uh, we can build buildings and stuff to increase that at some point. Yes, that is the mission. We can bring you over now. Uh, as for ships, let's bring them all together. We're probably going to need to delete quite a few. Simply because we don't have the naval force limit for it. Okay. Uh, administrate an empire. We unlock that. Nice. 
Bureaucrats have long favored paper over parchment and other materials due to how much easier it is to work with. There are also various measures that can be taken to make official papers harder to falsify. The invention of the watermark in Sinothale is one, the elaborate marbling techniques in calligraphy of the Rohini ministers another. As empires increasingly come to grow to encompass more than one continent, this need for provable authenticity and ease of use has led to imperial bureaucracies from Yanshin to Kanor exclusively using paper for official documents and orders. Paper is now more expensive. Do we own any paper? I don't. We don't. We don't know what this paper is. We, we don't produce it, but boy oh boy, we made sure that it's more valuable. All right, we have lots of valid rivals now. And as much as I know it's gonna pain some of you, I'm gonna rival the trolls. And I am also going to rival probably Severed Ear. If I can, no, it doesn't look like they are a valid rival. Neither is the Azra Expedition. Uh, what about these guys? Anyone over here that I'm able to click on? No, it looks like it's mostly just people in the Empire. Nimscod is a valid rival. Sure, I'll go Nimscod then. Alright, I took a loan. That's unfortunate. We'll be able to pay it off soon though. Uh, I don't want to expel the mages necessarily, and we do have estates. So let's go ahead and go to the merchants. Uh, we have 62% crown land, so that is absolutely fan freaking tactic. Start the nobles. Uh, we want the monthly monarch points. I want. Um, yeah, we'll take supremacy over the crown. That way, everyone's a little more loyal. We will get uh, free enterprise and grant colonial charters. Shamans. I would like the monthly admin. I would like oversight. Thinking about the. Uh, Religious diplomats. Eventually we'll slot this in probably, but we don't need to right now. Uh, merchants, I would like the monthly Diplo. Yes. Mages, I don't have enough land for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, their loyalty is fine where it is. Oh, I get to choose the organization. Let's go for... Uh, it'll ask us what we want to do. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start losing a lot of claims and stuff here. Uh, let's summon the diet, and we can build this temple in Assault. That sounds worth it to me. Let's make sure that all of this is also stated. Probably should have done that before I deleted troops, but that's okay. Here are our ships, and that that means that we can now decide which ones to get rid of. Uh, we are quite a bit over force limit. It is costing us quite a, a lot of money. I'm thinking half the uh, the transports should be enough bring us into a better position here uh yeah you know what i think that is that's good i'm fine paying for some especially because we're just going to mothball these for right now so it's not going to cost like any upkeep i just want to have you protecting trade hmm yeah protect trade here i have another colonist that i don't really want to expend right now now we're just going to save up for 100 admin points. We are needing to take military tech, and then we will focus on ideas. As for ideas, it seems that quality is going to be our biggest friend here. We have infantry combat ability plus 20%, my god. And we also have discipline. So we're going to go ahead and lock in quality ideas first. And then as a secondary idea group, I think religious is honestly a good play because we need that culture conversion cost. Though there is an argument to be made for trade, I think trade will be like a good third choice once we maybe get some more vision here. Uh, we can go religious. Because fun fact, we're, we're definitely going to be swapping religions here at some point. So we want to make sure that we are ready to convert things. This will cost 802 military power. You know what? I think we can actually afford to take the first one and still take tech uh, pretty close to on time. It's not like we have any innovativeness to lose anyways, if we do not. All right, our troops are drilling. Our fort is uh, mothballed. Our vassal. That's not our vassal. Oh, well, sorry about this, man. Like, like my bad, but you can't exist. <laughs> I know it sounds bad, but like, I can't have you existing. And look at that. Uh, Orbitrol is no longer a valid rival. That is free power projection. Also, they are going to get away. That's fine. 
Connection of Commerce, very good. Our truce with Gawed is up. It's something to keep in mind. They could decide that they uh, want to fight, though I doubt it. Yeah, I think they're they're a bit busy. What do you mean defending against Reveria against Red Scale? Huh? They must have guaranteed them. And Reveria was like, yeah, we're gonna ignore that. Interesting. I don't know how they're losing so badly. Uh, land theft, favor neither party. Tank their loyalty, that's fine. Go ahead and get this siege done with. Pretty easy war all around. Just uh, gotta clean it up. Just for good orders, our general has died. The one that was in combat, of course he did. There we go. Perfect. You guys can, uh, yeah, keep looting that, I guess. That's fine. And we have the admin points, which we will click once we are no longer at war. Obviously, I don't think you can move your capital while at war. I'm not going to click this because I'm afraid it's going to break. Because you're not supposed to be able to move your capital during war. Uh, how much am I spending on inflation or interest? Almost a ducat. Yeah, we'll pay that off then. Uh, rise in the soulstone trade. For centuries, the humans who have lived in these lands believe that the pearls present across Isle Vroin contain the souls of the dead, specifically those slain during the Dragon Wake. With the ramping up of production of these pearls, despite some protests from our local human subjects, others still have begun to seek their fortunes on the island, and a miniature pearl rush has begun. Merchants have begun arriving from across Kanor seeking to buy the pearls at a high price, especially the Corvurians, who seem to take a peculiar interest in the more morbid mythology that surrounds them. Hmm. I wonder why the uh, Corvarians would be interested in souls and perhaps the dead or undead. Uh, our coffers grow 368 crowns, begin some development and give some development costs and plus one local goods produced. Wow. Yes, police. Love to see that. We're going to have to do some development here, but it's still pretty expensive. All right. Production buildings. Yes, go for both of those. Trade... Already have one in Sedevic. Okay. Army, any good uh, taxation buildings? No, not at the moment. Uh, protocols of conquest. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that. Such as the price of demonstrizing. We're going to have some pretty harsh events. That's 40 aggressive expansion. What? Huh, I suppose that is a lot, actually. All right. Well, we need it, so. I don't know, did they like pop out of my vassal or were they already here? I would have sworn, would have sworn that uh, there was no one there but our vassal, but I guess not. Means we do have to wait on that mission a little bit longer and we can choose a new rival. I think uh, like Arboran makes sense, right? They're kind of closest. Sure. Arboran, you're done. All right, get, oh, it's gonna have them drill. Come on, man. Anywhere closer I can stand? Yeah, right here. Nim Scott is preparing to attack Reveria. Well, it, it looks like uh, Reveria's plans of attacking the Kobolds is not going quite the way they had hoped. Uh, sucks for them. All right, looks like this colony is now completed, so we're gonna move together again. We're going to need a couple more troops out here to deal with the high number of natives. We do have another one right here, actually, that's not too high in number, so we'll go ahead and start colonizing that as well. Uh, famous adventuring band captured. We are going to have to let them go. Let's hope we don't lose the stability. All right, nice. It was only a 50% chance for that. Uh, ideas, that's fine. I would rather take tech in a year. Missions, we can do Orc Doomhand Burr. Uh, goodbye. To be honest, he's not gone. I guess I decided to keep him. Didn't even know that we had hired these. I had totally forgotten about that. Uh, we are making so much money now. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're going to upgrade both of those guys then. We can afford... You know, we can even afford to upgrade this guy. Monarch points are key, so we'll want to make sure we're doing that. Now let's move our capital to Garok. Or it's probably Garok. The city of Garok, greatest of the cities upon the Bay of Chills, is a vital strategic and economic center in the Hellenic Reach. As well as this, it serves um, as a much more central point for administration, being at the core of many of our main population centers. As such, the city seems to be an obvious location for the Grey King to hold court in. 
After all, a new kingdom needs a new capital, one which can serve as a center for our realm in the years that are to come. Lose 100 admin power, gain some development, we move it, gains a bunch of reductions to local development costs, which will be good for developing colonialism. Beautiful. Fall of Bavik. I need to own Bavik. I can do that. I can make that happen. Not right now. <laughs> Not right now. Well, actually, we could make that happen. That would not be too difficult of a war. And we, we will uh, probably make our way towards that. Let's go ahead and fire off the mission down here, economic development. Yes, it does give us more development in Assault and gives us an additional minus 20% local development cost in our uh, capital province here. So if we look at Assault, it now has a development cost. Sorry, I got distracted by the fort defense. Uh, development cost reduction of boo, 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 a lot. It only costs 33 points to develop. It's 21 development and forest. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, now we're losing money. Why are we losing money now? Because... We're no longer transferring here, I, I think is why. I think I'd rather collect here, to be totally honest with you. I don't have much control here. So we'll probably make more money, but now we're, we're losing a lot more than we were before. I'm not sure entirely what happened there. But uh, so be it. I mean, we are, we do have another colony, so maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Uh, we're going to want to build a fort on our capital. Ooh. 35 army tradition yes let's hire a couple generals oh well yeah yeah okay this war is definitely happening I, if, if you don't find an army with generals like those i don't know i don't know what you're doing what's the point what is the point how long time can revoke some titles we got four years Increase of Goblin Tolerance. It accords some stuff up. Uh, language lessons. Yep, organize them. This is not stated. This was a state. We're going to state it up. All right, as for cultures. Uh, all right, we already have White Reachmen as an accepted culture. That's what's important. Korintar wants men. Sure. Go ahead and have it. Oh, we have another fort as well. Uh, we can probably mothball these. I know it'll drop our army tradition faster, but... Honestly, whatever. All right, making money. Are there any other good buildings that I can uh, throw down? To progress. Oh, I don't want to go to progress. But we have to. Yeah, Assault can get uh, one of those fancy, fancy marketplaces here. We can grab another building like that. We have Eskerberg rebels that want to pop up. And a general has died, but that's okay, because we have replacements. Yes, we do. Let's actually hire another one. All right, just trying to get something with the Yellow Siege, but I suppose a 4542 will. It'll cover. It'll cover for what we need. And let's build up a couple more troops here. Actually, no, hold on. Let's, let's not. Let's not. I want to... Did I just get rid of the castle? That was being built there. Oops. Okay. Well, we'll fix that. I'll, uh, I'll build a new one. Or no, I was, I was canceling uh, the marketplace. That's not nearly as bad. Not nearly as bad. I could just restart. Lose a little bit of money. It's fine. Uh, we can also take Miltech. Let's do that. Before we end off today's episode, I want to click the uh, Gather a Great Host. Manpower level less than 100%. That, okay, well, sure, buy one then. And uh, shake the earth, do his guidance, gather a great host, 200 religious power. Oh, just, it lowers profession, ooh, okay, so it's like, uh, gathering an army is like sacking professionalism, but you only lose half that professionalism and you definitely gain more manpower. That's really, really good. Okay, well, we definitely have enough manpower now. <laughs> we definitely have enough manpower. Somebody mentioned that they uh, they wanted to know what that did, and I had no idea. And so now we do. But I think on that note, we will leave it here. We have 
uh, kind of focused more on internal things for this episode, but we are now Grombar, and we will start to expand in uh, this direction, taking out the people along the coast and expanding our uh, naval power and such, and also trying to colonize over here, but that might take a little bit longer. I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.